are a child of God and I pray that that will just be a revelation to you this morning again just to so that you know that you know that you're a child of God and and also what is the reason what is what does that mean to me because we can we can talk about the word of God we can talk about prayer but if it doesn't mean anything to you why are we doing it and uh, by God's grace I believe in the power of prayer and I believe in the power of prayer and we need to be obedient when we pray like I believe I'm a child of God and that's why there's a edge of protection over me but we need to pray when the Lord said pray and I want to pray now in the name of Jesus let's pray Holy Father Lord I thank you there's power in prayer Lord there's power when we speak the word of God and prayer is not just when we close our eyes and pray Pray and worship us what we did now through this, this song and the revelation that I am a child of God and the Holy Spirit speak to us today. You are present, you invited here and you called us and we said yes and that's why we're here. The Holy Spirit speak to us so that we can understand firstly I'm a child of God. That's why I can and I, I, I received the revelation of a glorious God. And because I'm a child of God I spoke this morning the name of Jesus. And there's power in that. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will make it personal in my life now, Lord. Make it personal. Speak to us this morning. Lord, thank you for breaking walls down, Lord. And because I spoke to the name of Jesus over fear and anxiety, I can walk in victory. Because I'm a child of God. There's no more fear now. And I thank you, Lord, for that. There's no more anxiety, Lord. All addictions is gone. All fears is gone. So I can move into my plan and purpose. My mind is clear so that I can hear the word of God. The revelation of the word of God will be spoken today. And I will receive that revelation like never before. Of course, you are here, Lord. We're just uh, vessels of the King. We're just vessels of, of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit will speak to you today. Because all fear and anxiety is gone. Everything that was holding us back is gone now. And we will receive revelation today through the power of the Holy Spirit. That is God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And... Uh, and God is good. And uh, I want to start off with first a couple of questions. And uh, the first question is, what was the message the last four weeks? First one, Holy Spirit. And uh, I did not uh, bring my sweets. I left it at home. But I've got something for you. So the second question is, so the first one, Holy Spirit. And the second one, you are one. So you can share. Oh, praise the Lord. That's you are one. Uh, so. Oh, that is so romantic. Oh, so beautiful. Oh. Can everybody give me an ah? Oh? Thank you very much. So the second question is, what is the theme of the year? Who, who was there first? Uh, Denise was there. Okay, she, was, she can also get a sweet. This is sweet, isn't it? So I, I, I think... Oh, you have to share as well. So, so I think the chappy is like a tomato. Is tomato a fruit or vest vegetable? Okay, it's, it's a fruit. Okay, I grew up as a vegetable, but we can talk about it afterwards, debating about it. But um, so is is timorals, Okay, that's timorals, Is orbits a fruit or vegetable? Okay, <laughs> it's a, a sweet or a chappy? I don't know. Anyways, but it was not part of the message. But praise the Lord for that. So so our. our we heard, we received a revelation on the Holy Spirit. We received a revelation that on the symbols, who He is, the fire, the dove. Was there any other symbols? Maybe the Holy Spirit is revealing to you the different water. So, uh, um, just revealing that revelation of the Holy Spirit for the last four weeks. And then we, we go back and in January we received a theme, glory revealed, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Isaiah 60 verse 1. So, if that revelation doesn't change your life, I pray that the Holy Spirit will activate something in your life today so that it can change something in our life. Because if, if it doesn't, why are we here? So we're here to be changed. We're here to be encouraged. I don't know if you felt the Holy Spirit today, worshipping God, speaking His name, being set free today, receiving protection today through prayer. That we need to, to live a life of change every day, every moment. And not just Sundays ch um, um, in church, but every day. So the Holy Spirit revealed glory is the word for you today. And I pray that you will take this, this clip, I will put it on, on the groups afterwards as well. And may this small little clip just make an impact in our lives. 
so that we can remember the word, that we can choose and look for opportunities, that we don't miss out on those opportunities that the Lord put in front of you. But it's a choice. It's an active choice that we need to make. The word that we receive, take it into our lives and be the light in the world. So in that picture, I pray that you will just keep on meditating it, it through the week as well, and the Holy Spirit will bring that revelation to us. But now we're going to the Word, and the Word of God is, is amazing, and uh, it's, it's, it's touching every part of our being. And through this, this first verse I want to read is, For the message of the cross is foolish to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. So that can be a very powerful verse, or it can be a very scary verse. Your choice. So, the message of the cross, the revelation of the cross, is always getting fulfilled in Jesus Christ. The, the message of the cross is what Jesus Christ brought for us. But we need to, to, to take that message and let it be a revelation and life-changing in our lives, in our personal life. So the message of the cross is foolish to those who perish, and, but is the, um, to those who is in Christ is the saving power of God. So I want to bring you back to, to Friday. So the, I don't know what started on Friday. I wanted to say the Olympic Games, so I gave it away. So nobody's getting sweets. I'm getting a, a sweet there. So the Olympic Games started, but I just want to take you back to Friday morning at the devotion at, at, um, at work. And... Uh, we looked for 2 Corinthians 5 or 17. And uh, every time I look at a verse, I think of Ursula. Yeah. So, so we are new being, the old is gone and the new has come. But when you read, carry on reading, then it says, now, so the new thing that, that come is that we are ambassadors of Christ. And uh, so in the remind you say, I am an ambassador of Christ. So you are an ambassador of the kingdom of God. And I just looked on Friday and we started at Olympic Games and all that the, the countries was representing there, and this big build-up, super excitement, the Olympic Games, wow. And then we saw that in the Olympic Games, a couple of thoughts, and maybe I can ask Elias, Esther, I don't know, who else got black and white? Maybe if you got black and white, come up the stage. Maybe Elias, you look so good. Can you just join me up on stage here? So anybody else who's got black and white on, please come and join us here if you want. And uh, we want to see the black and white. It's dynamite. Near <laughs> forth. It's not for the sharks. Just want to make that clear. Uh, Sandy, just want to... Yeah, no more sharks. And, and Esther, your parents are telling you, you you have to come to the stage. Um, no, um, I just want to confirm, your mom said, if you don't come up the stage, there's no food for a week. Um, so, um, and... Uh, just because I never put anybody on the spot. Uh, yeah, great stuff. So we, we've got a, a couple of interesting things of the Olympic Games. So there was 184 countries represented. There's 206 nations represented. And uh, everybody carried a flag um, moving into the Olympics. And then every single person that you see there was qualified to be there. Every single one. I don't know. Did anybody watch it? A little bit. The boats floating in. Flags, all this. Good. So get that picture as well. It's the first time ever it wasn't in the stadium, walking to the stadium, they were floating in. So uh, maybe we also floating when we qualify. So while we're waiting for Esther to... Uh, so, so if, I just want to make it clear, if, if she doesn't come, Nicole will have to come. So just, just saying. And, and in that build-up, yeah, so we... A picture again. You are Olympian. So I want to leave the first message, part of the message I want to leave with you today is in your race. The Lord said he put a race before you. Run your race. Don't run anybody else's race. Now I would love to challenge Sandy with a playoff in the guitar, but I'm not going to do it. Thank you mums for being a strong mum and forceful mums. And, uh, and in, in, in my dad has been revealed to you. The Lord put a race before you. He made you uniquely. If you were a short putter, I don't know if that's a word in English, but if you a short putter and you train for short put, don't go do the pole jump. Is that pole jump also the right word? So short putter and pole jumping. So in 
your life, who you are, you were made perfect. Did you know the, everybody wants to do the 100 meter sprint race? I think that's the coolest. Uh, don't know anybody know Usain Bolt. Um, me and him were running together at one stage. Uh, so, so um, everybody wants to do that 100 meter final sprint. But if you're the short putter and the Lord gave you that talent, run your race fully. Because the medal that you receive is going to be exactly the same. Ask him, Martin, when he gave that, and Tony Colleen, when they give you that medal at, at Comrades. Wow, what an amazing thing. So run for your medal. Run your race that the Lord put before you. If we come through here, we, we meet, meet Terence and, and Alice, and they're just as, as important as we saw the awesome worshiping that, that, that the worship team done. Everybody in your race, run your race fully. When you're out the side there and you're smiling and you're freezing and the and the, the tar smiling next to you, that smile that they're doing, it's amazing. It's, it's making impact. So all of us, the race that the Lord put before you, run your race. And don't look at anybody else's race. Look at your race. Focus on your race. Focus on what Holy Spirit planned for you in your race. So in this, um, another reminder that Jesus Christ qualified you. Jesus Christ qualified you to run your race. Don't ever forget that. You know, we've got a lot of shortfalls. I'm a sinner, and so are you. But by God's grace, we are forgiven. We are forgiven. Remember that. And that's why we're qualified. That's why we can, because we're a new creation, as 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, and as we read on, we are set free. We are a new creation. We're taking our flag of the kingdom of God, and we're running the new race that the Lord has um, put before us, running with the kingdom flag um, as Olympians in, in this, this life. Because we're running for a kingdom that's unmovable and unshakable. By God's grace, there's a new sport in the Olympic Games. And that's why I've got my three athletes here. And does anybody want to give it a, a chance? You can get a sweet if you want to give it a shot. What is a new sport in the Olympic Games? Seriously. Maybe, maybe you can show us. Give us a clue. And three, two, one. Thank you very much. Thanks for being a superstar. I, and I just had to get her up stage because <clears throat> uh, you, you can take quick photos if you want to. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys look so cool, and and you can dance. They do say white men can't dance, so that's why I don't dance. So I think it was a movie about that. So praise the Lord and thanks for my professionals. Thanks for really training hard for this event. Um, that. That you, that you knew years before that you had to dance off today. So the new sport is breakdance in the Olympic Games. So whatever the Lord puts before you, even if it's breakdowns, and you make a fool of yourself, do it for the kingdom of God. Whatever the Lord puts in your race, run it fully. Even if it's sometimes not so cool, run it fully. Be a true ambassador of Christ. Take your flag up and run it fully. But also on a a little bit of a negative side. Um, if you look at, I didn't look. I looked about ten minutes or a couple of minutes of it, but it wasn't. It wasn't that cool. It wasn't that cool. The world is truly changing, and the darkness is in your face, properly. And we need to pray for this world, because this world is getting darker and, and quickly. It was a complete mockery of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I want to say back to that verse, for the message of the cross, cross is foolish to those who perish. And I want to stand, to you, stand here and the people who were as part of that opening is going to perish. And how can I say that? The word of God says that. It's complete mockery of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the simple word is sometimes we don't speak that word anymore, that you get a sinner and you're going to die and you can condemn for eternal hell. It's going to be a gnashing of teeth, and if you don't have teeth, it will be issued new teeth to you. I think the Connect group will know what I'm saying there. But hell is real. Hell is eternity. It's eternal. It's forevermore. 
It's a very, very scary place. And I want to leave with all of us, it's our responsibility to take the light into the world that's so dark at this moment, and it's getting darker quickly. It's our responsibility to keep on shining our light. We've got the responsibility to stand up and know that you are ambassador of the kingdom of God. And you are qualified because of Jesus Christ. We need to take the flag and, and move into that dark, dark place in this world. So we need to go and rise and shine in the, the, the reflection of Jesus Christ shine out of us. So it's a couple of things I want to just highlight that we see, we're talking about the theme of the year is, um, is glory. So what is glory? And there's a couple of things that came out and was amazing revelation as this passage and I give all glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that the word of God is truly alive. And I want to say thank you Lord Jesus that your word is alive. And so what is glory? This is a, a reference to us san um, sanctification. The seraphim are calling out that the world is filled with God's glory. Isaiah stands in the moment in awe of the glory of God inside the temple. The seraphim insists that his glory cannot be contained inside the temple. It is everywhere. He is. Uh, I just want to put a mindset out there. I'm going to read from, from Moses 3 verse 1 to 15 also known as Exodus 3, verse 1 to 15. And we're going to read about the I am. And I pray that that I am will be revealed to us today. What does that mean? That, that glory is from the I am, the self-existing one. So the I am, the self-existing one. And as we go on, just to, I just want to try to reveal to us, in the Holy Spirit, I pray that you will help me too, in your life, what does that glory mean? We, we say glory revealed and we talk about the Holy Spirit is part of my life and is living inside of me. What does that mean to you? I pray that we will remember today that we, it will be a revelation to me today that the Holy Spirit is God. He lives inside me continuously. And what is this glory that has been revealed to me that I need to take out of the world, uh, out into the world? So that we walk into Matthew 28 verse, uh, verse um, 18 to 20, that it become an active opportunity for me to be the light of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to shine him. And uh, I need to pick up the pace. Um, this Olympian is need to, to run faster. So, so the glory of God is um, it's also it's shining forth or public display of God's character and nature. So we as ambassadors of Christ need to be a, a shining forth or public display of God's character and nature. So that's why we need to know God. Because otherwise if we don't know his character how, what, what will we shine? If we don't know him, what will we shine? So we're not shining us. We're shining Jesus Christ. But that's why we need to be a, uh, uh, know what is his character and what is his nature. So Isaiah 60, the people are called to respond. So this verse is a, is a, is a calling. It's a calling to you and me. Go, ambassador. Go and shine my light. I pray that we will understand what is that glory so let's, um, the pe people are called to rise up and shine as a response to God's glory and the light arriving in the midst. So we need to take that light so that it can arrive in, in the midst. And there's just a note here, the, wor the world has come into darkness. And this is, I put this before I saw the um, Olympic Games and truly mockery, truly darkness, um, very, very evil, very satanic. And the satanic is now in the world is, is so cool. And it's strange to say because sometimes I live in a Christian bubble where I don't see it anymore. But Friday was an eye-opening. That Christianity, uh, Satanism is, is cool in, in our society. How, how can it be? How can we, we look at the things and in this world is truly, truly dark? But it was a note, the world has come into darkness, but God is doing something about it. Don't ever forget who our God is. Don't ever forget He is the Almighty One. He is everywhere all the time, and he knows it all. This is not a surprise what happened on Friday. He knows it, and he's doing something about it. And uh, by God's grace, we won our first medal. Uh, the seven uh, Springboks won a, a bronze medal. So glory to God. And what is the anthem that they sing? What is the anthem that they sing? Of course, it's ukulele. South Africa is a light bearer of Jesus Christ. And that's what's happening in that darkness in this next couple of weeks, the darkness think they, they, they're going to portray darkness to the world, but the South Africans will be the light. The Af South Africans will be the light that 
in that, in that darkness. And I believe that there will be changes in the Olympic Games in so many people's lives and, and in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to go over to the Word of God. And it's going to be two long passages, so please bear with me. Bear with my English and uh, enjoy the ride. So like I said, uh, again, in your mind, think of when we say the I am is the all-existing one. Know who is your God. We need to know his character so that we can take it into, into, into the world, his presence into, into the world. So Exodus 3 verse 1 to 15 I'm going to read. And may the, the Holy Word of God speak to us today. So, um, now Moses was tending the flock of Yitru, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to, um, to the far side of the wilderness and came to Europe, the mountain of God. There the angels of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire uh, <coughs> within a bush. Moses saw that through the bush was on fire, uh, did it not to burn. So Moses thought I will go over and see what strange sight why the bush does not burn up and in that in your lives a lot of things sometimes look strange but it's our choice to do want to go closer to God sometimes we, we come to to church and there's a cold wind a strange wind outside and then the bed holds us back and we do want to go but praise the Lord you hear now we hear you you went to encourage you went to go and see why doesn't that bush burn up? So, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from, uh, called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, Here I am. I pray that you will hear the calling today in your life. And as we read the scripture, I pray that the Holy Spirit will just, med- that we can meditate on the word and that the Holy Spirit will just in our lives, what do we need to hear today? Because the Word of God is alive, it's powerful, the Holy Spirit lives inside you, and He's revealing this Word to you. And I pray in your situation, in your life, this, this will become relevant to you. So you are called, and know that the, the Lord is here now, um, sharing this Word with all of us. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Do you believe this setup that we are sitting here now is holy? After this worship that we had, I believe this place is holy. We're sitting in the presence of a holy God. We're standing on holy ground now. So we us receive the word. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abram, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. At this moment, um, know who is your God. The God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob is the God that we serve. At this, Moses hid his face. Because he was afraid to look at God. And Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of these slave drivers. And I am concerned about their suffering. I want to let you know that the Lord is hearing your crowd. The Lord is hearing your word. The Lord is hearing your prayer. And he is saying to do today that he is doing something about it. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians. And bring them up, uh, um, up out of that land into good and spacious land. A land flowing with milk and honey. honey. The home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Pesarites, Heviites, and Jebusites. I want to pray whatever heights is holding you back to move into your country of milk and honey. If it's a fear height or anxiety height that we sang earlier, or maybe a addiction height, whatever height it is in your life that is holding you back, that you don't move into the promised land that God's got planned for you. Lay it down today. No, God wants to do something about it, but you need to, to let it go. You need to give it to, to God. So, um, and now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I, that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. Emmanuel, I will be with you. Now in your life, whatever is holding you back, God is saying, I will be with you. 
He will set it free today. But you need to let it go. And Holy Spirit, speak to us. What is it that we need to let go today? And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I got to the Israelite and say to them, the God of your, our fathers has sent me uh, to you. And they asked me, what is the name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you ought to say to Israelites. I am has sent um, me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the, the God of Abram, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. May we know our God so that we can take it into the world. That we can say, the great I am sent me. The God of my forefathers sent me. Let's know the character of God. Let's know that if we look at that picture, and one of the symbols, there's a couple of symbols of the Holy Spirit. The symbol of fire, the symbol of the dove. Know that the Holy Spirit inside us will reveal the word of God. The revelation is the I am, the only, uh, who can only be revealed by the Holy Spirit. And um, then if there's anybody else, there's another passage I want to read as well in, in Acts 9 verse 1 to 19. And is if anybody here that wants to, to come and read it for us, that can make it crystal clear to us. So the Holy Spirit will just re reveal the Word of God for us. So, um, so in this revelation, I pray that we will understand again that, that who is God? He is the Creator he is truly, truly the self-existing one that is the supreme creator of the universe. The self-existing one, the supreme creator, the I am. He is truly Yahweh. So I'm going to jump over to, to Acts 9, verse 1 to 19. And this is just, uh, everybody knows this is the Damascus experience. And I pray that all of us will just be reminded or have a Damascus experience when we go through the word of God. So as we go, then Saul still breathing threats and murder. Uh, also just, in the, just picture yourself where we, we, we're looking at now when you talk about Saul that became uh, Paul. So we're talking about Paul here, the Apostle Paul, the, the one that, that written two-thirds of, the, of the, the New Testament. So then Saul, also known as Paul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way. Does anybody want to just remind that you are part of the people of the way? They know we're known as the people of the way before we are Christians, so we're also the people of the way. Know that you are ambassador of what? May the Holy Spirit reveal to us that we know who is the great I am. May we know what we do believe. When the world wants to come with their nonsense and, and um, questions they want to ask and confuse us, that we know what is the truth. Because we need to take the truth into the world. And sometimes it, the, truth, uh, the questions the world asks is very close to the truth. But it's, if it's not the full truth, it's not. So whether men or, um, or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly a light shone around him. May the, the, the word of God and the light of Jesus Christ shine, shine on us every day, suddenly. And we will go to it like we saw Moses went in the burning bush. So then he fell to the, to the ground and heard the voice saying to him, Soul, soul, why are you, are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus. Isn't that amazing where, where we can just see Know that the Holy Spirit is God. Yahweh, our Creator God, our Father is God. And that Jesus Christ is God. And that is the self-existing one, Jesus Christ. Who, who are you persecuting? It is hard for you to kick against the, um, the goats. So, he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to them, Arise and go. I pray that we will receive the word today that we need to arise and go. Go into the city 
and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing the voice but seeing no one. The message of the cross is foolish to those who perish. But for those who are in Christ, that hear the voice, that arise and go, it's a message of salvation. It's the power of God in our life. So let's arise and go. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when, he, when his eyes were opened, he saw no one, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there for three days without sight, and neither ate um, nor drank. And now we're moving over to verse 10. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said into the vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. I pray that I, Gideon, will say, Here I am, Lord, now, in the name of Jesus. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go. And I pray that we will put our names in there and hear the word of God today. That we will proclaim and shout, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord will say, Arise and go. Go to the streets called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. In that moment, what was Saul doing? A blind man who wasn't eating. I believe he was fasting. He was seeking God. He was seeking God's face. Now the Lord is seeing you praying. Knowing that the Lord is seeing you calling on to him. And when you call on him, he will hear your voice and he will do something. And in a vision he's, he has seen a man named Ananias, Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered the Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to, to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go. Do whatever it takes in your mission, in your race. When the Lord said, go, go. No matter what the world, the world says, the Lord's got your back. For he is a chosen vessel of mine. So are you. Know that you are an anointed chosen vessel of God. Of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Brothers, Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you come, he sent me that you may receive your sight. May we receive our sight today in the name of Jesus Christ and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there, there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once. And he arose and was baptized. So when he had received food, he, he was um, strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. And in our lives, uh, if we look at a picture and we think of Moses and we're thinking of, of Paul and we're thinking of, of my life, um, there's a lot of other things I also want to bring in. If we think of Jesus' life, when he was baptized, when he received the, the Holy Spirit came on him, and after that, the power that they have doing miracles, we also know that the Holy Spirit, when the revelation came to Jesus Christ when he was dead, the, the, the Holy Spirit has risen him. So we need to know that whatever is dead in your life, the Holy Spirit will bring a life. But we need to stand up and go, because otherwise, why would God give it to you? If you're not going to run your race, why would he give it to you? So we need to understand that the Holy Spirit brings life, the Holy Spirit brings sight, and what is the mission the Lord wants to put on you? And a lot of things we can also be like Ananias and say, no, 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 this guy is killing Christians. He's killing people of the way. Whatever apples you face, know that God's got your back. The word of Emmanuel is coming up that God is with us. And if you know the light that you're taking is for you as well, that light that you take, the things that we say and the things that we hear from the word of God, the promises and the authority and the power is for you. So that will encourage you. That will be the power that we're moving on. I want to maybe also worship team to come up and uh, that we can just, um, when I move over into, into closing. And uh, in this um, slide, 
the Holy Spirit revealed the glory in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was there where Moses was at a burning bush. But he had to shine away. But I want to re reveal to you in the New Testament, as, as born-again children of God, we've got the, 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 the blood of Jesus Christ over us. So we can go into the presence of God. So seek God while He's still there to be found. So seek God while He's still there to be found. So go and, go and seek your revelation because we're living in the New Testament. The Lord Jesus Christ made a way for us. So like Moses did, like Saul also known, the AKA, I think it's cool, uh, also known as Paul, that we will go and put my name there, that Gideon will go and be ambassador of Jesus Christ, that I will be a flame carrier of the light and the reflection of Jesus Christ, and also a light. And I don't know where's my torch. So the light of the Lord, as we saw that Olympian carrying the light, this year was not so good, but other years was good, that light was not allowed to, to go out. Make sure that your light is truly filled with oil. And for homework, I want you to go and, and read about the ten virgins. Five made it, five not. That is a very, myself and Shalene were speaking about it, it's a very, very intimidating parable. So just go and read that and make sure that your lamp is full of oil. Make sure, because the word is, there is clearly speaking to Christians speaking to the body, speaking to us. So make sure that your lamb is full. But the Holy Spirit revealed that to us. So go and read about the ten versions for homework. So in closing, I want to bring it back to the Olympics. The glory of God is like uh, the flame of the Olympics. But we have that to, to go and see this one to put. So we need to take the, the truth into the world. We need to take God's light into the world. But if we want to see His glory, we need to be in His presence. We need to go and, and seek His character. Understand that He is the great I Am. May that be revealed to us. What is the glory of God? We receive that glory of God every day, every moment. Because our Holy Spirit is living us, inside of us. That we know that we know that God is living inside of us. That's why we can take His light. That we take, understand that we are qualified to Olympians running the race, shining the light of Jesus Christ. Not our light. We're just a reflection of the light of Jesus Christ. But we have to be filled with the power of the, the Holy Spirit. So let's go into the world and be the light of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to pray and then we're going to also just understand that we glory carriers in Christ. And Pastor Basil, thanks for, for just reminding me about this reflection. And I don't know if it's going to work, but maybe this will work a little bit. So may we, we go, and uh, who didn't get some glory? Um, I first uh, see, hey, it's just a self, self -self. But, uh, and may all of this, may you know how do you look to the world. May all of you just go and be a true reflection of Jesus Christ. And may that blind every darkness and dark person in this, in this world, may we go and blind all of them. May the glory of God and the reflection of Jesus Christ truly be in us so that we can go and shine it into the world. And uh, just something on the way here, Shalene just said, one of her friends told her, if there wasn't a stirrup or oh, oh, uncomfortableness when you looked at the Olympic Games, I want to challenge all of us, including me, just to go, to go do introspection. Because sometimes we just become so part of this world you know, we just, ah, it's not that bad. It's an abomination to our God. Let's not be part of it. Let's be the light and the reflection of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you that the Holy Spirit is here now. You are God. Lord, I pray that, that we will understand who is Yahweh, who is the great I am. Who is Jehovah Rapha that heals us now? And in this moment, I want to pray for anybody that's sick now, that Jehovah Rapha, please touch them and heal them. Because it's not a word that we speak or the action that we do. 
you anoint us to pray for somebody that's now that needs to touch on your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that they will receive, that they will, will open their, uh, their hearts and their minds to receive that healing now, but they will, won't keep it for themselves. As they heal now, they will arise and shine a testimony about the goodness and the power of God that's touching their body now and healing. All glory to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that we will hear the word today, that we will go be seekers of the glory of God. And, and we received it through this year, Lord. So many ways... We receive the glory of God, but let's not keep it for ourselves. Let's take it into the world. Let's go. Let's go rise and shine. And the power and the joy of the Lord will be my strength in knowing that I'm protected. There's a hedge around me, and you are all-powerful. We serve in a kingdom that can't be moved. We can't be shaken because we are ambassadors of your kingdom. And the power of the Holy Spirit will give me authority. And that we will stand. And I want to pray in this prayer that everybody will stand as we're going to go and rise and shine and as we stand and, and everybody let's stand if you if you're saying yeah i am lord if you hear the voice today from god it, it says my children go and that he's telling you rise and shine and take my light into the world because it's a dark world but i love all of them and i want them to be saved as well that will take the responsibility and go and be your light in the world for urgent matter, for urgent call that the, goal, the Lord is telling us that the harvest is ready, but the laborers is few. So let's go into the world and be the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you enjoyed this message, click the subscribe button to be subscribed to our channel. We will remind you each week when the latest message becomes available. If you feel that someone else would benefit from this message, click the share button and share it with your family and friends.